Hello Year 5, so 12th of January 2021, fractions again. Uh, today it is to compare and order fractions. Started a little bit of this yesterday, comparing and ordering fractions. So yesterday we focused on fractions that were less than one, proper fractions. Today we're going to look more at improper and mixed number fractions, so ordering and comparing these types of fractions. Remember a few key things. We have got the keyword equivalent, equivalent fractions. That is really helpful. I'm going to equal and same. Really helpful for when we're comparing or ordering fractions. If fractions have different denominators, we might need to calculate equivalent fractions before we can order them or compare them. Two really important words as well. Descending meaning going down. So if you order fractions in descending order, if you do it from greatest to smallest, descending down, that's a way to remember it, and ascending going up, so from smallest to greatest. So those really two important things. And remember, if we are looking at equivalent fractions, we can remember the rhyme. If you do the same to the top and the bottom, equivalent fractions, you've got them. All right, that helps us remember how to calculate equivalent fractions, which, as I've said, are really important when it comes to comparing and ordering. Now, before we go on to today's work, Let's have a look back at some of these problems. Now, I spoke to a few uh, of you over Teams, give you some feedback on these, but we're gonna go through the answers for anybody who was a little bit stuck on them. So, the first one, which representations of four-fifths are incorrect? Correct, four out of five shaded. There's the fraction written, the proper fraction, four-fifths. We have four out of five counters are purple. However, we have three out of five dogs. Don't ask me what those dogs are, I don't have a clue. The other issue we have here is now, you might think, all right, four out of five are shaded blue, that's four fifths. However, as some people rightly pointed out, these parts of the bar are not equal. Therefore, that cannot represent four-fifths because four equal parts out of five, there are not four equal parts. Uh, so those three are correct representations and these two are incorrect. Right, the pairs of equivalent fractions found in the grid. Three quarters is the first fraction. Can we find one that is the same as three quarters. Now remember, we have to do the same to the top as we would to the bottom. And anybody spot one? There is not an equivalent fraction to three quarters. What about three fifths? I just realized I'm not zoomed in properly. Three fifths. Is there an equivalent fraction for three fifths? There isn't. Six sixteenths. Both the six and the sixteen can be divided by two. Three eighths. Three ninths can be simplified as well. Three ninths equals a third. Twelve eighteenths. Both the twelve and the eighteen can be divided by six, which would give us two thirds. Spot one here, one half, six twelfths, two fifths is equivalent to eight twentieths. Five times four is twenty, two times eight is, sorry, two times eight, two times four is eight. So the fractions that we have remaining, we've got <coughs> the two here that did not have an equivalent. We've got seven fifteenths here, which cannot be simplified because seven and 15 are not divisible by the same number. And we have the final pair, one quarter is equivalent to two eighths. Next question, Eva says, 
I know the three quarters is equivalent to three eighths because the numerators are the same. Well, we can use what we've got in here to help answer this. Three quarters is not equivalent to three eighths, I'm afraid either, because if we want to make three quarters into eighths, as we found there, three quarters, we had three quarters and three eighths, but this one did not have an equivalent fraction within the grid. If we multiply by two, we must do the same to the top, and then six eighths. So either is not correct, and there is our explanation why. Rosie says to find equivalent fractions, whatever you do to the numerator, you do to the denominator. That's exactly right, Rosie. Um, but are all of these equivalent? I'm afraid not, Rosie. Four eighths does in fact make eight sixteenths, because we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by two. Four eighths can be simplified, so equal two quarters. Four eighths is the same as five tenths, because both fractions are equivalent to a half, so that is incorrect. And four eighths is certainly not equivalent to one fifth. As I said, four eighths is the same as one half. So her method does work, but she has calculated those two incorrectly. Number five, Ron thinks you can only simplify even numbered fractions because you keep on halving the numerator and the denominator until you get an odd number. This is sometimes true. Okay, so we saw that we could simplify four eighths. Okay, so we can half those. However, you can have an odd numerator and an odd denominator, like three ninths. Three ninths can be simplified to make one third. So Ron is not correct. It is only sometimes true. Now this question here, okay, so here are some fraction cards, all the fractions are equivalent. So 4 something equals BC equals 20 fiftieths. Now the first place to start here is to know if the 20 fiftieths is equivalent to 2 fifths. Alright, we can divide the top and the bottom by 10. So we need fractions that are equal to 2 fifths. Well, to go from 2 to 4, we would have to multiply by 2, so we have to do the same here. So A must be 10. Now, if A and B equal 16, A is 10, B must be 6. Now what fraction can this be then? What is our denominator? What is C? Well, to go from 2 to 6, we multiply by 3, so we have to do the same again. 5 times 3 is 15, so the answer. 6 fifteenths C equals 15. Okay, so hopefully that clears things up for some of you. Now, comparing and ordering fractions. Let's look at today's tasks. Look at this in focus question here. Each roll is cut into six equal pieces. I take seven. We'll call him Billy. Each roll is cut into nine equal pieces. Pieces. I take ten. Call her Sally. So Sally and Billy, they've got two rolls each, but they're cut into different size pieces. Billy's rolls are cut into six. So each roll has six sixths. Sally's are cut into ninths. So each roll has nine ninths. Two holes, that's 12 sixths in total. You can write it as 12 sixths. And there are two lots of nine ninths, so that is 18 ninths in total. Now, Billy takes seven, okay? So he has seven sixths. One, two, three, four. Sally takes 10, so she has 10 ninths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now we can represent that in a different way. We can replace 
nine ninths with one hole. Because nine ninths are the same as one hole. So we can write it like this, one and one ninth. Similarly, we can replace six sixths with one hole. So what Billy has is one and one sixth. Because he had seven sixths, that is the same as one hole and one sixth. Likewise, ten ninths is the same as one hole and one ninth. Now, who had more? Well, we can compare these alongside each other. Sally's on the top, Billy's here. So they have one whole roll each. So they're equal. So then it comes down to the ninth and the sixth. Okay, because Billy has one whole and one sixth, and Sally has one whole and one ninth. Okay, so we can see these parts are equal. Now we look at the proper fraction that comes with them. Look very closely. Can you tell which one's greater? I suspect you can. One sixth is greater than one ninth. We can show that like this. One sixth is greater than one ninth. One ninth is less than one sixth. So if we ask who had more, Billy or Sally, the answer is Billy. One and one sixth, or seven sixths, is greater than one and one ninth, or ten ninths. Okay, so we can write that out. We can say one and one sixth is greater than one and one ninth or we can write it as seven sixths is greater than ten ninths okay now if we'd wanted to we didn't have this in front of us so these pieces showing which fraction is greater we could turn them into equivalent fractions as well okay so we've got one sixth and one ninth. Well, one sixth equals three eighteenths. Six times three is eighteen, one times three is three. One ninth equals two eighteenths. So we can see that one sixth is greater than one ninth. So we can use our equivalent fractions when we're comparing these fractions. Let's look at another example. We have three bottles here. The amount of water in each bottle is different. Which bottle has the least water? Let's sort of zoom in slightly. So we've got first bottle has one and three tenths of a litre. The next one, one and two fifths. And two and one fifth of a litre. So which bottle has the least water? Well, sometimes with questions like these, you can straight away take out one of the options. All right? You can see here, we've got one and three tenths, one and two fifths, two, two holes and a fifth. This cannot be the bottle with the least water because that has two liters as opposed to the other two. All right, this one has two, the others have one. So let's look then, we can eliminate that option. That has the most water, that's the greatest value. Let's look at these two then, one and three tenths and one and two fifths. Which one has the least? Let's look at these representations of the fractions. We've got one and three tenths here, and we've got one and three fifths here. Now, just looking at them, can you tell which one is less? I bet you can. But again, we can prove it. All right, one and three tenths. Why not use equivalent fractions to work this out? Now, three fifths. Let's make that into tenths. Five times two, whatever you do to the top, you must do to the bottom, so we do both of them. Three times two is six, so three fifths equals six tenths. Therefore, one and three fifths equals one and six tenths. One and six tenths 
is greater than 1 and 3 tenths. 1 and 6 tenths is greater than 1 and 3 tenths. So this bottle here, this, has the least. We can also order those fractions then from greatest to smallest. So in descending order, going from the greatest, this is the greatest, then this one, then this one is the least. Likewise, we can say in ascending order, going up in size from left to right. Now, these pages are on Teams and on the website. Okay, so it talks through all of what I have shown you in, in similar detail, just shown you in some slightly different ways. So these pages are all on line for you to use. Lesson five and lesson six, and there's the second part. You can have a go at the guided practice questions when you're doing it as well. There's the guided practice questions for worksheet five and for worksheet six as well. And then these are the workbook tasks. Okay, so you can see there some of the shading questions and then putting in the sign, the symbol to show which one is greater, which one is less. And then overleaf. Similarly, fill in the blanks and then arrange the fractions in ascending order. And as always, you've got that text box down the side if you are completing it on Word. Um, Reminder there, descending means down, so the order of the fractions from greatest to smallest. Likewise, ascending means up, so we'll go from smallest to greatest. There are four sheets in total. There's sheet three and sheet four, and they are all attached to the assignment on Teams. Okay, so I need to recap those key terms. Really important message. If you don't have these already at home, these are on Google. These things are called fraction walls. All right, they may be really helpful when it comes to this fraction walls. So you can print them off, or you can just make your own out of a piece of paper. All right, and then you can do the way I've been doing by cutting bits out, arranging things. Okay, lots of different ways to help. I'd be amazed if any of you have these at home. I certainly don't, but they're really helpful. Okay. Looking forward to seeing all your answers. And that's it for today. Thanks.